Paul is writing from Corinth to Timothy who is just across the sea in Ephesus. So that you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. It's so easy for churches to become swayed and, and taken over by interesting ideas and popular people. But Paul is calling Timothy back to the regular gospel, the basic truth that he at first preached and heard. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4, not being occupied with myths and endless genealogies and speculations, that church so easily gets involved in all sorts of controversies about crazy ideas. He goes on to speak about the goal of divine training, and that is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience and sincere faith. If we have faith and a good conscience, Paul says we shouldn't reject conscience. Conscience is one way of interpreting this word, but it's also sensible or reasonable knowledge. And he reminds us too that this church exists for all people, as the church prays for everyone at the end of verse 1. He goes on to say that the goal of all of this, this praying for everybody, is that we would lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and dignity. That's what church is for, bringing about quiet and peaceable lives in godliness and dignity. Not only this, but men and women are included too. The church of the day was innovative in that women were learning or being discipled with the rest of the church. And that would set the church on its way towards um, being a more equal kind of community. And the people who know leaders should should, you know leaders the best should respect them the most, talking about leaders and how they look after their families. That's for bishops and for deacons. But also about how leaders should be gentle kind of people. People who are respected for their gentleness and their kindness, not for their charisma and their power. And so that is the kind of church that Paul describes that Timothy should be working towards and leading and it's so important because, as he goes on to say, this household of God, this church community, is the church of the living God. So it's not the building or, or some place or some denomination, but rather the community of believers. And this community of believers, if they are all these things, if they are peaceable and gentle and loving and they're learning love that comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith, like 1 Timothy 1 verse 5 says, then they become the basis upon which others will learn about the mystery of God. Paul will go on in verse 16 to speak about how Jesus came to live amongst us, was vindicated in the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, and taken up in glory. But he knows that the world will believe these things based on the behavior, the order in the household of God. Let's pray. So, Lord, as we have read through 1 Timothy, we pray that we would be people who have good doctrine, which produces love that comes from a pure heart, good conscience and sincere faith. We ask, O Lord, that you would help us not to reject reason, but to keep our eyes open and our minds open towards good conscience. That you would help us to, with the world around us, lead a quiet and peaceable life with, goodness, with dignity and godliness. And Lord, that men and women would learn together and grow together so that there would be equality in the world that we live in today. And finally, Lord, we pray for our leaders. In the world today, we, we look for leaders who are exciting and interesting. But you invite, but Paul invites Timothy to look for leaders who are gentle, who are people of integrity, who are well respected by those who know them the best. And so we ask for your hand of protection and guidance on all those who you call to lead your church. In Jesus' name, Amen.